All right, so nice to see you all here this morning. And as Katie said, I'm here to talk about the five basic unity principles. Who knows what the five principles are? Only a few hands going up. <laughs> That's okay. I've been coming to Unity for 10 years, and it's only been in the last few years that I'm really starting to get it. What those five basic principles mean, because I'm starting to live them. They are powerful. And the more I study them, the more I pay attention to them, the more I focus my attention on them and begin to live them in my life, the more power they have. And I truly do believe and am very focused on my spiritual nature these days because that's how I want to live. And I've been discovered some amazing things. But for those of you who aren't familiar, I am just going to read them out. They're so simple. And there's a bookmark at the welcome table. I see Jackie's got one. We give one to every new person that comes in the door, because this is the foundation of unity, and they are powerful. But they're not powerful if they're just sitting up in your brain, which they did for me for many years. I couldn't really relate to them. I didn't get it. But as I lived them, I started to get it. The first principle, God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. That's spirit. You can call it God, divine presence, the Buddha, the field, whatever you want. But I think all of you have an understanding that there's something bigger than you out there in the world that connects us, that keeps the planet spinning around, that keeps the galaxies spreading out into this, expanding the universe, that keeps us connected to something more. Two, I am naturally good. I and naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. That means all of you are naturally good. And I know you know that because I've seen you express it here every week, every Sunday. Three, I create my experiences but what, by what I choose to think and feel and believe I am a creator, a co-creator with the divine. Either I'm co-creating with the divine or I'm co-creating with my ego. And you know where that takes you. Anybody that's had their ego take over, try to control other people, situations, change the way things are, doesn't work out so well, does it? But when I'm co-creating with God, with the divine, I am in the flow. Life is simple and easy. The fourth basic principle, through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. So many people, I'm in groups and they say, who meditates? And I never put up my hand. <laughs> who meditates? <laughs> I can put up my hand now, but only because I had to figure it out. Because I don't sit and go ohm or hold my hands like this or stand on my head, breathe through my nose. <laughs> that's one way of meditating. But that's not what I do. Because I understand now what meditation is for, at least for me. Meditation isn't just about sitting there and being quiet. It's about connecting with the divine. Connecting with my own divine nature, which is non-physical. And there are, it's about getting out of my head and letting go of what I think. That's what meditation is for me. Is noticing the difference between when I'm just being present and when I'm thinking. Because I can meditate and if my mind's going crazy and that's what I'm focusing my attention on and paying attention to, I'm not meditating. But when I can just sit and feel that presence, that love, 
that's inside me, that's inside you, I'm meditating and I'm praying because I'm focusing my attention on that which I want. And isn't that a prayer? And all prayers are answered. And finally, I do and give my best by living, living the truth I know. And I'm going to explain all of this with a story. And how these powers, these principles help me through this experience that many of you might describe as negative. But a month ago, every morning I get up and I walk to the store. It takes about 10 minutes to get there and then get my coffee and then 10 minutes to walk home every day. And as I'm walking there, I'm reciting the prayer of protection. I'm focusing on my intentions. I have three right now. I am the light of the world. I am committed to living in the love vibration, and my life is a prayer. That my life is a prayer is an intention that I came up with during the Divine Essence Groups. Who here has heard of the Divine Essence Groups here at Unity? It's based on Lynn McTaggart's The Power of Eight. It's where we gather together, set clear intentions, and have in a group, on, we do it on Zoom, I'm part of two groups, one Monday nights and one on Thursday evening. And Claude runs a group, he's on Monday nights as well, and he has a group on Thursday mornings at 10. But that group has sort of dissolved, people got busy doing other things. So there's space. But what the Divine Essence Group, or what the DEG groups is what we call them, what they've done for me is they've helped me focus my attention on what I really want. It's been powerful. And I see everybody that's part of those groups changing their life, becoming more and more of what they want, speaking more and more about what they want and what they have already, and less and less about what they don't want and what they don't have. It's powerful. That intention that I have, my life is a prayer, and I believe all prayers are answered, that's the number three principle. I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. That I love that intention because it keeps me focused all the time. If I'm not feeling good, I must be giving my attention to something that I don't want, right? And isn't that what you do? When you're not feeling good, you're thinking about what you don't want or what you don't have or wishing that what was happening was different. So I'm at this... About a month ago, I go get my coffee, I come home, and I notice my van, I can see it off in the distance, and normally it slants like this because of where the road is, and I have it parked in front of the house, and there's a bit of a slope, so the van slants like this. But I noticed my van was slanting like this. I'm going, what the? That's odd. Oh, no, I must have a flat tire. So I get up to the van. I don't have one flat tire. I have two. Both my driver's side tires were completely flat. And so I examined them, and I noticed there was about a one-inch gash on both of the tires. Someone had slashed my tires. Well, as a human being, having a human experience, I wasn't happy, as you can imagine. But I was also aware. I was present. My witnessing presence was there, and so I was watching myself get very upset and think very bad things about the person that had slashed my tire. But it didn't last long, because I remembered my life is a prayer. I remembered the first principle, that God is everywhere present and God is good. And I immediately took a breath, and I grounded myself in those first two principles. First, that God is everywhere present, and second, that I too am good, and I am present with God. And so God's got my back, in other words. So I immediately said, this is happening for me. It's not happening to me. And I told several people about this story, and every one of them saw it as something happening to me. And so I thought, no, this is happening for me. And so I surrendered. And I am committed to living in the love vibration. So I sent love out to the tire slasher. I grounded 
in my spiritual presence, I sent love out to the person who had slashed my tires. And I immediately relaxed. And I started feeling good because I can, I can be happy no matter what. I just have to focus my attention on it. And so I focused my attention on this is happening for me. There must be a lesson here. What's the lesson? So I just sat and waited. And the lessons came. It was beautiful. The first thing, the first lesson, I'm standing there looking at the, and realizing that, and this is after I'd had to get my tires changed and take them down and go down to the okay and tire and get it all done. And once it was done, I was standing there looking at my van, and, but feeling good the whole time, trusting that this was happening for me. This is a good thing. And realized that, wow, it, it happened. I could be happy or I could be miserable. It wouldn't change what happened. Those tires were slashed. I had to get them changed anyway. But I was able to get, them, get all that done peacefully, effortlessly, joyfully. It was beautiful. And then I immediately thought back to how I would have handled it in the past. And I would have been upset for weeks, months. I'd be telling everybody what this terrible thing that happened to me and blah, 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 blah. And I would have been miserable. And the tires still would have been slashed. And I still would have had to get them repaired. And I still would have had to pay the $400. The next one was, my tires were pretty bald. And I realized that spirit must be looking out for me. Just thinking, Bob, you're not changing those tires. Because I've been thinking about it for months, that I should change those tires. Well, the universe was saying, no, here, get those darn tires changed. So I did. Now I got two brand new tires on the back. My traction's way better. The van was not handling well in the snow. And it's handling so much better. But the final lesson that I received was even more powerful. And I came to realize that it didn't matter if my tires got slashed or they didn't get slashed. Nothing in this world of experience really matters. Because it's going to be here one minute and it's going to be gone the next. So what's important? What I learned from my experiences the wisdom I gained from my experiences. And because I was calm and peaceful and open-hearted throughout that whole experience, all these downloads came that helped me to understand the basic principles, a be more beautiful way to live. And I thought, wow. And I realized that if I had been upset and in my head thinking all those bad thoughts and all those grievances, I would not have got those lessons. There would be no space for that information to come in. Wow. And then a few weeks later, another gift, even more powerful, because I started to see what I was doing and realized that I am a superhero. Wow. And so are all of you. We all have superpowers. Charles Fillmore talks about it all the time. He's, he wrote a book called The Twelve Powers of Man. They're superpowers. And I have them too. And there was three superpowers that I had. Number one, I had the ability to love. Love is a superpower. And I loved my tire slasher. I loved being able to go out and get my tires repaired. And changed. I loved the whole experience. And so I was happy and relaxed and in the flow the entire time. What a superpower. Because I know in the past I would have been upset and I would not have been happy for weeks or months or years. Superpower, love. Number two, superpower, a witnessing presence. We all have a witnessing presence. That is my spiritual nature. That is your spiritual nature, your witnessing presence. It's not uh, impacted by the experiences of my life. It's just witnessing them. And that superpower, because I've been practicing this for a very long time, of, being, of connecting to that witnessing presence, which is what prayer and meditation is all about for me, is to become one with that witnessing presence, that God force, my divine nature. 
That's what I did. I dropped into my witnessing presence when I saw those tires being slashed. And so I was able to look at things objectively and see that it's no big deal. I'll just go get my tires fixed. It's okay. I'm still okay. I can still be happy. Powerful. Superpower. Connecting with that witnessing presence. Your own divine nature. It's there. But you have to invite it in. Spirit does not show up without an invitation. So if you're stuck in your head, focusing your attention on just what you're thinking all the time, one minute you're going to be happy and the next you're going to be sad. If I was just there in my head, one minute I'm happy, the next minute my tires are slashed, oh, and I'm miserable. But as the witnessing presence, I don't have to go there, and I don't. And the third superpower that I have, and all of you have, is focused attention. Wherever you focus attention, there's a saying, you become what you think about. Anybody ever hear that one? Uh-huh. You become what you focus your attention on. And most of the time, we're focusing our, our attention on what we think. But what if we focused our attention on what we want to feel in each and every moment? And that's what I did. And that got me through. And so here I am standing a month later feeling blessed that it had happened because I had learned so much. I had discovered these superpowers that I have and, and saw the effects of them. If I lived them, the fifth principle, if I lived them, I have to choose to be happy in that moment. I had to, to choose not to resist what is. You ever tried stopping the earth from turning? Huh? Bit of a wasted effort, don't you think? And everything in your life is the earth turning. It's your life. Not just your life, but everybody's life combined, turning. You ever tried to push against the universe and say, stop growing, universe. Stop changing. Bit of a wasted energy, don't you think? Wouldn't it be better to just accept what is and just look at it a slightly different way? These five principles help you do that. They will lead you in the direction you want to go. Isn't that why you're here? So I encourage you all, start focusing, paying attention to where you're paying attention. And that's why the, the witnessing presence is so important, because that witnessing presence allows you to see where you're putting your attention. If you're in your head, your thoughts are jumping around all the time. And if you're just following your thoughts, you're going to be zoo. But if you're the witnessing presence, you can see yourself thinking. And you'll go, is that what I want? Is that what I want to think? Because whatever thought you're having, you're going to have a feeling with it. Some are going to be good. Some are going to be bad. So what are you focusing on? The thoughts that feel good or the thoughts that feel bad? You all have three superpowers. You have the ability to love. You have a witnessing presence, your God self. And you have the power to focus your attention. I encourage you to use those three superpowers. And see if your life changes as much as mine has. We're going to go into a meditation. I believe we have a song that we're going to sing. We're going to sing this three times, and then we'll go into the meditation, and then we'll sing it three more times to come back to the present. Look at those words, and as you sing them, feel them. Get a feeling for them. I surrender. I trust and I know that as I surrender, I fall into the arms of love. I surrender. I trust and 
your thoughts fall away and become presence to yourself. Simply pay attention. Feel the weight of your body in the chair. If a thought does appear, just notice, oh, there's a thought. See yourself in the third person. Be your own witnessing presence. And then see yourself as if it's someone else. Someone you love. Someone you cherish. Something you wish nothing but the best for. Notice yourself. Can you notice how heavy you are, that other person is, how heavy they are? Can you feel their weight sitting in the chair? Can you be aware of any thoughts that are coming up in their minds, any emotions that they're feeling? What's going on in their bodies? Can you feel the breath going in and out of that body? Not your body, that physical body, because you're not a physical body anymore. You're the witnessing presence. You are powerful and you are non-physical, non-local. Take your awareness and imagine our, the Milky Way galaxy right now. And take that awareness, that witnessing presence, out to the edge of that galaxy. Out to the edge of one of those spiral arms. Notice how easily you can do that. And instantaneously, you just traveled hundreds of thousands of light years in a split second. That's the power of your own witnessing presence. Charles Fillmore wrote a book called The Twelve Powers. And I couldn't relate to them for many years because that's not me, because I was stuck in my physical self. And of course, I didn't have those attributes. Now I realize that those attributes are spiritual attributes. They're the attributes of our witnessing presence our own divine nature. So as I read these powers, as the witnessing presence, as a divine nature, can you see these powers in that? Faith. Strength. Can you feel the strength of your own witnessing presence? Wisdom. Love, 
power. Imagination. Imagination is imaginary. It's not real. It's not physical. But you have one, don't you? Understanding. If you do meditate or you get out of your head and you're simply present and open, do you not receive understandings? Little aha moments, little thoughts that just kind of drop in out of the blue and you go, oh, right. Now I understand. Will. But not a pushy, striving, grasping will like the ego. No, a clear, simple, strong will that knows the difference between right and wrong. That knows what's good and what's bad. That knows what the human body, that person you're paying attention to, really wants and really doesn't want. Order. When we're out of our heads, when you're out of your head and you're just that witnessing presence, can you sense an order in all that chaos that's going on in that person sitting in the chair that you think you are and that that's all you are? Not much order in my life anyway when I'm in my head. It's kind of crazy. But as a witnessing presence, we can just see the beauty of life, the mystery and magic of it. And if you're anything like me, the older I get, the more I see that there is an order. There's a reason why things have happened the way they happened, even though I couldn't understand them from my physical perspective. Zeal, or I prefer the word enthusiasm. As the witnessing presence, with no fear, everything is beautiful. Everything is wonderful. How exciting. I wonder what's going to happen next. How could one not be enthusiastic with an attitude like that? Release. As the witnessing presence, you can see what's not working for you. You can see what's getting in your way or what's getting in the way of that person you're witnessing, your human self. And you know what needs to be released. And you can do that. You can simply let it go. And finally, life. Feel the breath coming in and out of the body. That is life. And your physical body isn't making it happen. Or at least it's not creating the air. Well, it is, but not consciously. Every breath we take in feeds us life. It is life force energy. And it's just there. It's just present because that's our divine nature at work. Everything we need is just there. So say yes to that breath, even though you don't know how it can happen, whether it's going to be there in the next breath. And yet, of course, it is. As a divine being, you are all powerful. And if you can allow yourself to be that divine being, and walk hand in hand with your own human nature, with your own ego, guiding it along the way. You too will live a beautiful, calm, peaceful, effortless life in the flow. And so it is. Now we'll sing, I Surrender. Surrender. I 
trust and I know as I surrender I fall into the arms of love I surrender Yeah.